Hello, welcome once again. Uh, we're going to be discussing again Honda Accord, and this is 2005 and up. Usually they're the same uh, schematics for all of them. Basic idea is the same. Now, as we start with the starting circuit, you can see the components are the same as every other make and model. There's always the same components involved. There's always a range switch, a transmission range switch. You have to be either in neutral or park to start the car. There's always a relay, a starting relay. You'll always find that before you go to the solenoid. Now, this coil can be actually activated by a computer. Either the computer can control either the ground or it can control the 12 volts. In this, in this specific make and model of the year, there is none. There is no computer involvement in this one. It's pure components, relays, and switches. So, Starting from the beginning, and then we're going to go over, I just want to show some uh, schematics. I'd like to thank a viewer, I believe his name was Gawang, if I'm mentioning it correctly. Uh, gave me some good advice, how to change the titles. Uh, really good suggestion, so thanks for your advice. Now, beginning from the battery, there are two heavy cables from the battery. Now, this white one here, this white one here are heavy cables. You might not able to be tell that it is from the schematic but you can see it's a little heavier it's it's uh, uh darker than these other ones so this is the one that carries more current and this is the one that carries more current obviously to the starter motor when it is activated <clears throat> this is the ones that always come off the battery positive terminal so if i zoom out you see <clears throat> me you can see that this one goes to the famous popular multi-fuse uh, component that Honda is so noted for and goes bad. So in that unit, you see the dotted line? That means both fuses are contained in the same compartment, same component, so to say. So if one is bad, change all, all of them. It's one unit. So we have one uh, uh, 100 amps, we have another one 50 amps. Like I, like I said, this is the one carrying the heavy uh, 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 curtain. What's not seen in this schematic is there are other systems, other fuses with other systems also connected. That's why you see this little uh, line over here with the arrow. This wire carrying the current has also more current to carry to other ones but since it has nothing to do with the charging the excuse me, the starting system you only see the one that is involved with the starting system which is this fuses and the rest of them the other ones will be on different pages now i took the liberty of dividing this isolating this Wanted to try to make it a little easier, and you'll see the reason why I did that. So starting from which one? We always start from key components, concentrated key components. What hits you, what gets your attention right away when you look at schematic? Any schematic. Start a solenoid, that gets my attention, key component. What's a key component over here? The, the range switch. What's another key component? This one, the starter relay. Another key component, the, start, the, ign the ignition switch. Those are key components. And then you interact, how everything interacts with each other. So on the wires, you don't pay attention to the wires. You don't pay attention to the ground. It's not really relevant. The most important is try to get, it, try to get understand the, the components, the symbols, and then work your, way around, work your way around it. Now, as you'll see, so we said we start from here. We have current flowing. We don't have current flowing here yet because this is not closed. First, we have to activate the solenoid. How do we do that? First, we go current flowing here through the 100 amp fuse, which is what we said one unit, rated at 100 amps. Then we have 150 amps. Then it comes out <clears throat> into another white wire over here. It comes out a G1, a connector, goes into this also this this under a fuse relay box like a connector b1 one side the other one a2 this is a connect see the connectors goes in here comes out here a white wire again into terminal three the ignition switch see this dotted line that means all of this is 
in this area so this ignition switch is in here one unit therefore current comes in here follow the, the the arrows from the battery which position do we have to be in to have current flowing to this relay if you said lock you're wrong if you said accessories you're wrong if you said on you're wrong the only position you can be is in a start position this toggles when you move this switch from the ignition switch it could go into four different modes the only one that makes a connection is in the start how do i know that because look at the connection this is the only one that has a connection you'll see one two three four four terminals but this one is the only one that has a wire connected to it therefore the other three will not do anything so we in the start position now comes the difficult part <clears throat> what do we do which one goes first the coil or this one always concentrate first when you're analyzing always start first from the coil side always always they call this the control side they call this the load side when you troubleshoot you can start here it doesn't matter where you start but when you're analyzing the circuit first time seeing it <clears throat> you have to start from the coil this activates this this does not activate that so we have current flowing here from here a black and white wire terminal one <clears throat> from the ignition switch to another one another uh, a terminal a connector a1 comes the relay which is in one unit see the dotted line where is it located under the dashboard the fuse relay box current flows here now there's a problem for order to current to flow we always say the rule we have to have a complete path to ground how do we give a complete path to ground? Like I sp specified before, sometimes the computer can help us out and give us a ground. This one, we have a physical ground. <clears throat> As you can see, this transmission range switch has to be in two positions, only two positions, to give us the ground that we need. What are those two positions? Neutral and park. I could be in a park, and current can flow here. I could be in neutral and current can flow here. So, what does this teach us? This teaches us a good concept. If you ever have a problem, a no crank, you try to start the car and it doesn't start. Absolutely nothing starts on it. Instead of a park, I can change the, the a selector, right, to neutral and then see if I can start. If I can start in neutral but not in park, Here's the culprit right here. How do I know this? How did it come up with this with this uh, option? The schematic tells us. The schematic tells me from here that I could be in park and I could be in neutral. How do I know? Look, there's a wire connected in neutral. There's a wire connected in park. No wire connected D4, D3, second gear, first gear no wires here only wires connected here the schematic tells me i can be in neutral and park what about reverse if you said you could be in reverse you're wrong why there's no connections in reverse and what does it do when we do this it gives us the ground the physical ground to this now we activated this side very important without this switch working we cannot activate this relay we cannot activate this coil <clears throat> very important this has to work well like a safety feature once current flows here guess what happens now current can flow in this way two and one and two is connected to one like i said it yesterday <clears throat> usually people sometimes they get they get hung up on the terminals and the numbers of every relay 86 85 and the other one is 87 and 30 you can't fall for that because here look at this what would you do in this case if you want to actually jump would you jump 87 to 30 but there is no 87 to 30 here it doesn't say 87 30 it says two and one so which one would you jump if you want to jump something you jump two to one this switch over here the contacts never jump this one my 
my theory being if you always memorize the relays as I always jump 87 to 30 and all that, what do you do in this case? What do you do in a case where it doesn't even say the terminal numbers and it just shows you the symbols? What do you do in that case? That's why I teach what I teach. You have to understand the symbols, how they work. Once I know the coil works, this closes to this, regardless of the numbers this could be two and one this could be five and ten this could be 12 and 50 doesn't matter to me all i see here is a switch contact a switch over here closing this circuit the 12 volts to this circuit to the solenoid that's all i'm interested in okay remember that so first we got this to go by this by this uh, uh range switch being in the correct position giving us a ground now he activated who he activated this one black and white wire has current flowing the current divided some of it went here some of it is going here and where is it going to the solenoid when a solenoid is activated it closes the switch to the starter motor over here to activate the starter motor what does that do Remember, we didn't speak about this wire yet. Why? <clears throat> because this wire is the one that carries all the big amps, 200, 300 amps, whatever it is, to the starter motor. <clears throat> this one cannot work, cannot work until he is activated, the coil is activated. The holding wind, the winding, they call it, the winding. Of course, you see you have a, a, <clears throat> a, um, a diet over here in reverse. In case when this goes on and off, there's sometimes there's spikes and things like that, just like you have it in other um, circuits with coils and windings. So going about this again, <clears throat> I divided this. Why did I divide this? This part is A, this part is B. I divided the circuit. When you troubleshoot the starting, starting <clears throat> a system, of any make or model, <clears throat> you have to divide it. You have to see which components can I have access to and which can I not have access to. Hard to get to the starter motor. Hard to get to that part. I can get to the battery. I can actually get to this multi-fuse over here and you see where it's located oh, where it's located over here. But to get to this, this is on transmission. This is difficult. This is difficult. These are easy access. So <clears throat> where am I going to go to measure the output of something? And then I know, in that instance, I will know that this all these fuses are good. All the ignition switch is good. The coil is working. And also the transmission switch is in the correct range. Where can I go to measure at a point on this relay to know all that in one shot? Now, think about the question. I want to eliminate all these components in one shot and measure a point on this relay that tells me that all of section B is good, meaning all this is good, the battery is good, meaning that this, this connector is good, meaning this ignition uh, uh, switch is good, because you always have to ask yourself, when I have a, a no crank, I'm not starting the car, is the ignition switch good? How will I know? How will I know that? Guess what? If I go here, like I always say, and I made a video how to measure in circuit relays, don't take the relays out. There's no purpose in that. With the power probes and all these things, I showed you, you put a, a coil wire in the terminal, then you put the relay on top of it. That coil, it's called the coiled wire, coiled wire. They make no damage to any terminals, nothing. You could put the relay right on top of it, it makes good contact. I use it everywhere every possible connector, everything, every relay. You'll see that video, go to my channel, Joe Eltras Schematics for Auto. I put that coiled wire that I said right here, that's 12 volts. What does 12 volts tell me? Think about it. The fact that I'm reading 12 volts tells me what? That tells me that this is closed. Good. What else does it tell you? It tells me this coil was energized. What else does that tell you? This coil was energized, so what? What else does that tell me that this coil is energized? That means this must be in the right range. It's giving it a ground. If this was not giving it a ground, this would be floating at 12 volts. Therefore, this is zero volts, boom, connected to ground. I have the, this switch is working. How do I know? Because I'm measuring 12 volts here. We're backtracking right now.
This is troubleshooting, but we're going in reverse in a in a con in a rever in, in, a, in an inverse process right now. This is closed. Twelve volts. Good. He's working. He's doing his job. He's activated. Why is he doing his job? Because he's doing his job. Why is he getting twelve volts in the first place? Guess what? Because the ignition switch is in the right position. It's working. I went from lock position to start position. So in one shot, if you have the doubt in your mind, is the ignition switch good? Guess what? I can even measure I can measure 12 volts over here, which I recommend. Or I can go over here to 12 because it's hard to get to the ignition switch, take it apart. So what can I do? Go to the black white wire that goes to the relay and measure 12 volts. If I have 12 volts over here, what does it tell you? This ignition switch is connected to where? The battery. And what else does it tell you? So look how many look how many things we came up with just by measuring one point. Isn't this amazing, right? 12 volts, 12 volts, this is good. If I have 12 volts over here, that tells me to, I have 12 volts over here. Because if I have zero volts over here, how can I have 12 volts? 12 volts tells me this is good. 12 tells, volts tells me this is good. This is good. This is good. This wire is good. This connector is good. And most of all, the very, very important part, because these go bad all the time, right? Sometimes you have to go to the, to the dealership. They are av available online, certain sites. Um, you have to watch the, the, the rating. The, the, some have slow blow uh, fuses with higher voltages. It's okay, as long as you get the unit in it. But like I said, the fact that I measured 12 volts here tells me what? This is good. He's good. This one is good. 50 amps. This one is good. This wire, this thick, thick wire is good. And the battery is what? Is 12 volts. Why? What happens if the batteries run down to 10.5 volts? What happens if the alternator, what happens if the alternator did not replenish, recharge your battery? Right? What happens? If that happens, guess what? If that happens, then you know what happens? Then this one will be 10.5, 10.5, 10.5. Not enough. Not enough. So therefore, this one over here is 12 volts. The fact that I measure 12 volts over here tells me that the battery is fully charged. Okay? Now, go over that one. Thank you so much for uh monetizing me on that on that channel please try to watch the advertisements like i said for that viewer um he asked for a request to see the other schematics uh this, this is for the engine let me try to zoom out engine performance over here engine performance over here then you have one for automatic uh, uh air conditioning let me try to zoom out for him. As you can see, these are not easy schematics. You really need good training with these things. So, another one. Hybrid 304. So, this is, again, Honda Accord 2005 and up. And another for, for AC. This is the charging system that will go over. We'll go, hopefully, go over all these things because this is a very popular car. Everybody had everybody in their lifetime has had either a Camry or an Accord or the Civic. They just it's just it grows up from generation to generation. So these are the schematics. This is the one we know went over yesterday. The power distribution. And these are the computer data lines. For that, you really have to understand how the computer works, communicating one module to another module. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please try to watch the advertisement because that's right now how I'm making the, uh, obviously, the finances from this channel. Um, Joe, on the try schematics for auto, please. You'll see hands-on videos on what I've been talking about. Thanks for watching.